everybody, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. I hope you're well and ready to meet yet another spooky animal. That's because each Friday this October, we've been celebrating Halloween a bit differently by looking into some classic Halloween animals like bats, wolves, and even ravens. However, today, I figure we would focus on probably the most common Halloween animal. And I say that because when I went to M&S the other day to buy this fine looking pumpkin here for only 65p, by the way, we are not sponsored by M&S, but I just couldn't believe how little I paid for a pumpkin. And it's a pretty good quality one too, but I digress. I saw cupcakes, I saw little gummy bears. I saw, well, they weren't bears. I saw uh, cakes with these guys on, it was insane. And of course, decorations. Then I came home and I found some lurking in the corners of my window. What am I talking about, guys? That's right, spiders. Our eight-legged arachnid friends are probably one of the most common Halloween animals. And so I thought today we would look into just what makes these guys so special by answering some common questions about them. Like, do all spiders make webs? Then we'll look into how cultures around the world depict them, whether that be for the good, the bad, or the just plain ugly. But first, if you're new here and you wanna learn all about animals in the wild or in pop culture, be sure to hit that subscribe button and make that bell go ding so you can be the first to see all the new content. Now, let's get started. So let's first answer, are spiders insects? Well, no, they're not. Spiders are part of the class Arachnidae, whereas insects are part of class Insectia. There's a few other things other than just the name of their class that set them apart from insects. Let's take a look at the body of a spider. They have two main parts, the cephalothorax, and the abdomen. Whereas my Madagascan hissing cockroaches have three body parts, the head, thorax, and abdomen. Insects also have antennae, two of them to be precise, whereas spiders do not. And on the matter of wings, some insects actually don't have wings. Some have two and some have four, whereas all spiders do not have wings. Insects also have three pairs of legs, where spiders have four. And speaking about those eight legs, just because you see something and it has eight legs doesn't make it a spider. Remember I mentioned spiders are in class Arachnidae? Well, their fellow classmates include scorpions, ticks, and harvestmen, just to name a few. All are part of class Arachnidae, and in such, they have four pairs of legs. With over 45,000 different spider species known to us and found all over the world, it should come as no surprise that not all spiders are the same. Yes, all spiders do indeed make silk. However, that doesn't mean all spiders make webs. In fact, only about half of the known spider species make webs to trap prey. Whereas the rest, well, like the wolf spider, they actively hunt out prey. And then there's others like the crab spider, which sits and waits patiently for their prey to pass in front of them. And just like how not every spider is the same, the webs of those spiders that do in fact make webs are also very different. There can be orb webs, which are the classic round shaped webs. There are the sheet webs, the funnel webs, and the classic cobweb web. Now let's move on to the eyesight of spiders. 
Last week we talked about the expression blind as a bat, which is what I currently am now because the sun is finally shining into the conservatory and right into my eyes. But don't worry, it's England, so it's sure to go back behind the clouds soon. In the meantime, if you missed the video on uh, which we talked about are bats blind, click up here roughly. Um, and I'll put the link in the description down below. Ah, see, there we go. It's going behind the clouds again. What did I tell you? Well, spiders have a lot of eyes. Some have eight, some have six, and some have fewer than that. So you'd think with a lot of eyes, surely the odds would be in their favor to where they would have good eyesight. And just as I say that, here we go. I'm gonna lose my eyesight once again. Well, that's not quite the case. Some spiders do have good eyesight and we'll get to them in a moment. However, a majority of spiders rely instead on touch, taste, and vibrations in order to actively hunt down their prey. Oh look, Tammy decided to join us. He's really looking forward to next week's video in which he gets to star in, aren't you boy? There we go. A lot of the web building spiders actually can only really see the light dark intensity changes, which then helps stimulate them building their webs at night or nocturnally. Because of course they don't really need vision to feel when something lands on their web. But some spiders do in fact need good vision to actively hunt down their prey. Jumping spiders are fantastic little friends. As their name suggests, they are incredible at taking big leaps. In fact, jumping spiders can jump more than 20 times their own body length, which is absolutely mind boggling. These guys are very active during the day and as such, you would expect they would need good quality vision. The jumping spider has an impressive jumping capability, but what I find even more fascinating is how they use their eyes. They have three different sets of eyes that help them hunt during the day. Firstly, the jumping spider senses distant movement and potential prey with using their side eyes. These side eyes give a blurry but wide angle image to the spider. Once the movement is detected and the spider turns and locks onto it using their large front middle eyes, these eyes receive a clearer and maybe even in color image of the prey. And then after the spider stalks closer to its prey, it then uses their front side eyes to judge the distance between them and the prey to see if it's close enough for them to make that leap. Typically, they need to be between two centimeters to three centimeters away to go for it and capture their prey. Could you imagine if we had that capability of having not just two eyes, but different sets of eyes that do different things to help us out. Oh, that would be so cool. Now it's time to look into some of the mythology and folklore surrounding spiders around the world. To begin our journey, it'd be silly to start anywhere other than Greece. According to Greek legend, there was once a brilliant weaver named Arachne. She thought she was brilliant as well and went around bragging about it. And good old goddess Athena caught wind of this bragging woman and thought to herself, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. My weaving is the best. So they had a competition to see who could outweave who. As one does it in classical Greece, why not challenge a god to a competition? But hey, it turns out that Arachne actually was the better weaver. 
And Athena got very jealous. She had quite the temper and actually destroyed Arachne's handiwork. Arachne was so upset that she actually tried to harm herself. But Athena stepped in and turned the rope into silk and Arachne into a spider. Thus now Arachne can continuously show off her weaving skills. If she is one of the species of spider, which I assume she was, that does in fact create webs. And of course, her name may sound familiar, and that's because that is where scientists got the name Arachnidae for the class of arachnids from. But yes, of course, we know not all arachnids are indeed spiders, but still pretty cool name. And like a lot of the animals that we've covered the past few weeks, they often get a bad reputation. But in some cultures, there has been stories of hope and light, quite literally. As we'll see with the Cherokee legend of Grandmother Spider. The legend states that in the early days when the light was absent from this part of the world because it was on the other side, the animals came together and decided that someone or something needed to be done to bring the sun over to this side of the world. They thought if they could just steal a little bit of the light so people could see. So Possum and Buzzard gave it a try, but they failed. In fact, the Possum ended up with a burned tail and the Buzzard ended up with burned feathers. However, Grandmother Spider decided to step in. Using her eight legs, she made a bowl of clay and rolled it over to where the sun was. And when she got to the sun, she gently put it inside her bowl of clay. And following her web back home, she carefully rolled the clay and the sun inside it back to this part of the world, bringing sun to the people. But alas, this time of year, we don't want all happy stories. Oh no, we want some spooky folklore tales as well. Which, luckily, given it's a spider and quite a few people are afraid of spiders, there was quite a lot to choose from. We'll first start off with a mystery down in Peru. I'm of course talking about the Nazca line. These giant figures were dug into the earth over 2,000 years ago by the Inca people of Nazca, Peru. There's a lot of mystery surrounding them, but one thing's clear. Looking at this picture, it definitely looks like a spider, wouldn't you say? And there's a lot of spooky tales revolving around spiders and the connection to the other side. While we're down in South America, the Chichas peoples tell a story that the souls of the departed need the webs of spiders so that they can cross the river that separates the land of the living to the land of the dead that is at the center of the earth. And the Mat people of India believe that the spirits of their ancestors live on the bodies of spiders that are commonly found within their houses. And now for a tale from the jolly old United Kingdom. King Robert the Bruce of Scotland, who was king from 1306 to 1329, learned a valuable lesson from a random spider in a cave. King Robert was exhausted from losing so many battles against the King of England while trying to win Scotland's independence. Weary and tired, King Robert went to rest in a cave. In this cave, he noticed a spider who kept trying to weave a web, but failing. Nonetheless, she kept going. She kept trying to build her web and eventually succeeded in making her web. King Robert felt this to ring true with him, for he kept losing battles, but he'd try again and he'd lose again, but he kept 
going for it. And when the spider finally made her web, that gave Bruce hope that you just need to keep trying. And eventually, Scotland did win their independence from England, thanks to the help of a spider inspiring King Robert. In fact, allegedly, this is where the phrase, if you don't succeed, try, try again comes from. There's also some superstitions around spiders. Like, if you step on a spider, you'll bring on rain. Or, if a spider crawls into your pocket, you'll always have money. But my favorite one is, if you walk into a spider web, you will meet a friend that day. But alas, the most catchy and most positive way to end the video on would be if you wish to live and thrive, let a spider run alive. With that in mind, if you learned something new, why not give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what is your favorite spider in pop culture. Mine is Charlotte from Charlotte's Web, a most beautiful but tear-jerking book that broke my heart when I was a kid and it still does. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you later. Bye!